Dear viewers, this is Pastor Kang Sermon. First, I greet you in the name of the Lord. Thank you for showing great interest in the last first video and calling me and promising to pray for me. I accept your encouragement and promise to pray for me as a sign that Holy Spirit is pleased with this work. Therefore, I believe that both you and I are joining in the good work of our Lord through this channel. The Apostle Paul led by the Holy Spirit clearly declared his goal of ministry as an apostle of the gospel to the church in Colossae. Colossians chapter 1 verse 28, Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. As mentioned in last video, I want to share with the Apostles' call while preaching of the Epistle to the Romans through this channel. Firstly, I would like to introduce the books helping you to understand Romans properly. It would be good for you to read the books together while watching this channel. First of all, I would like to introduce the 14 volumes of Martin Lloyd's expository sermons on Romans. This book had been published by Ben of Truth Trust to Edinburgh of Scotland. Reverend Lloyd Jones preached the contents of these books for 13 years from 1955 to 1968 when he was the pastor of the Westminster Chapel. As Reverend Lloyd Jones revealed in the introduction to the first book in the series, about 1,200 people listened to it every Friday night. Therefore, these books are not the result of the writing manuscripts for the purpose of the publishing books. Rather, he recorded his preaching voice every Friday night and later typewrite what was recorded to publish these books. He did not make a complete manuscript for a sermon, but stood at the pulpit with only one page containing only the points of the sermon. All his books that had been published are not the product of the handwritten manuscript, but rather the contents preached or lectured by mouth. What I can say so boldly is because the Lord has given me the honor of the professionally translating his books into Korean. As I know, it took 25 years for the 14 volumes of the Edinburgh editions of this series to be published. However, due to the work of the pastor, I could not concentrate on the translation so it took 29 years to complete the Korean version. It took 29 years from 1976 when I was a third grader in seminary to 2005 and it was only by our Lord's grace. In October 2005, we held the service of the Thanksgiving to God to commemorate the publication of the Korean version of this series. Ian Murray, one of the faithful leaders of the today's evangelical camp, sent a congratulatory message to me. Now, for the second time in the world, following Brazil, these books have been fully available by the Korean Christians. So I am greatly pleased and congratulated in the Lord. Ian Murray, who is one of the successors of Martin Lloyd's spirituality, as he served as an associate 
pastor while Lloyd Jones was a pastor at Westminster Chapel. He is a co-founder of the Nippon publishing house, the Ban of Truth Trust. He has been involved in publishing this series from starting to finishing. What a happy I was in the Lord's grace while translating this series. And only the Lord knows how many are those who became to see the essence of the gospel through these series and to assure of their salvation. I still can't forget the encouragement and urgency of countless Korean readers while translating this series into Korean. This series consists of 14 volumes in total, but only read the one volume of this series and you will be forced to read the other volume because of the grace from the volume you read. Now, pardon me to introduce Korean book of series Preaching on Romans, which is my work. This work consists of two volumes titled The Essence of the Apostolic Gospel, the Epistle to the Romans, published by the Puritan Faith Publishing Company in Korea. Lectures on Romans in this video will proceed with large reference to these two types of lectures. I always want to be a student who learns the word of the Lord before preaching it. May Holy Spirit open the eyes of my heart so that I may see more and more of the grace and the truth of the gospel. May the Holy Spirit give you and me more grace in this video preaching on Romans. Before proceeding directly to the text of the Romans, I think that it will be beneficial to all of us to point out few things. I would like to take a quick look at the position of the Romans throughout the Bible. In conclusion, I dare to say that Romans is one of the master keys to rightly reading the Bible. As we all know, the entire Bible is the God's ever-living word, which consists of the 39 books of the Old Testament, 27 books of the New Testament, and the total of 66 books. The whole Bible constitutes the one system of the truth, the one body. Then what is the focus of the one system of the truth in the Bible? Of the proclaiming that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible talks about God's rule and providence, God's judgment, and God's saving his beloved people from their sin. God's creation, God's providence or rule, God's judgment and God's salvation are not separated but are closely and organically related to each other. The will of God and His works are revealed in the Bible. In John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus our Lord referred to the point of the entire Old Testament. You search the scripture because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said the same point, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every book of the Bible repeatedly emphasized this point in more and more detail. However, the point has been most clarified through Romans. In a sense, Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 4 comprehensively summarized the point of the entire Bible. 
Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. Then the apostle clarifies the gospel that Jesus Christ entrusted to him to testify, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture. Concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the Son of God in the power according to the Spirit of the Holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. In these four verses, the Apostle Paul condenses and uncovers the identity of the gospel which he witnesses according to the call and sending of God and Jesus. Indeed, the Holy Spirit made the Apostle Paul write this epistle to the Romans to feed his beloved people. In other words, the Holy Spirit made the Apostle Paul write the Romans so that the essence of the gospel, the whole Bible speaks of, may be arranged systematically. In Romans, there is no parable, model, and type that are sometimes employed in other books of the Bible. In it, there are only the statements that reveal logically the essence of the gospel of God. So I dare to say that Romans is like a master key to understanding the whole Bible. Isn't that why the reformer Martin Luther even said like this? Even if all other books of the Bible were supposed to disappear and only the Gospel of John and the Romans were preserved, there would be no shortage of knowing the Gospel, the Bible says. All other books in the Bible are the channels of the grace of God, but Romans is more so. In the first chapter of the first volume of his series on Romans, Reverend Lloyd Johnson introduced the people of God shining like stars in church history who have been converted through Romans. While reading the words of the Romans chapter 1 verse 17, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith, Martin Luther realized the grace of the gospel that Bible says. John Bunyan, the author of the pilgrim progress who was living in immoral life, received great grace and became a new person through reading Romans of the accepting or ladies' invitation. He testified that fact in his book, God's Abounding Grace to the Ship Sinner. It is well known Augustine, who was on the way to destruction in the belly of darkness, was also saved by the grace of the world of Romans chapter 13. Add to this, understanding the present time, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is dreary over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the danger of the darkness and put on the armor of light. It was said that John Wesley's heart has been heated up after attending a meeting reading Luther's commentary on Romans at the place of the Aldersgate Street. Indeed, the Romans established the solid foundation of the saints' faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, Romans demonstrates the reason why Jesus Christ, who crucified and rose again, is the spiritual bread of life that God gave for our salvation. So, not only a few people who are well known in church history, but all God's beloved people should eat the spiritual bread Romans without an exception. That means that all believers should at least once intensively study and listen to the essence of the gospel revealed in Romans. 
the faster it is, the more beneficial it is. Because proportionally, we will have more days to realize the grace of the gospel and the stand firm in faith and give the glory to our Lord. Through the Romans, the Holy Spirit provides a solid foundation for believers. Today, many Christians who have received God's grace through believing in Jesus Christ can be compared to a weaver working with a bundle of disordered threads. Such Christians cannot be said to stand on a solid foundation of faith. God wants all of his children to logically know the doctrine of their salvation and stand confidently in it. For though we work in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have a divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. The gospel of God who saved us is not just a theory or idea. The gospel of God is the power that destroyed all elevated things against the knowing of God and captured all sorts to obey Christ. Didn't the apostle say the gospel is the power of God to save all believers? Also listen to 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. What is the Apostle Peter saying? Isn't he saying, be always ready to tell someone who asks you to tell the reason and to hope for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. To do this, we must learn the principle and the system of the gospel and be sure of them. I would like to say that Romans is a spiritual guide, the spiritual navigator that guides our path of faith. To help you understand, I would like to share an experience of mine. After graduating from high school in hometown, in the rural back country, about 140 miles far away from Seoul, I entered the university in Seoul, the capital city of the South Korean, in 1967. But when I started living in Seoul, for me, the most difficult thing was the finding a road. The village where I lived since I was born had no benefit of electricity before my second year of high school. For such me, in 1967, so complex streets and roads were more difficult problems than mathematic questions. They are so complicated that one day I felt as if Seoul Station was sitting around differently from ever. At that time, the starting point of life in Seoul for a villager like me was Seoul Station. However, because of the stress from the Lord, for about one month after starting to live in Seoul, I had some severe headache two months before entering college on the date of the announcement of the successful applicant for the college entrance exam, I was lost on the road to it. Thus, I arrived there late for two hours. It turned out that the other people had already checked and went back, so the campus was empty. The only thing that 
caught my eye was that the university announced the list of the successful candidates on bulletin boards with handwriting large letters. Thankfully, my name was on that list, so I was thrilled on and wept, looking at the bulletin board several times with unspeakable joy. Dear friends, however, something amazing happened to me about the months after I started living in Seoul, I learned the structure of major four roads in Seoul. I was very happy then. It was a big event for me to see the reason and structure of the road in Seoul at a glance. When that enlightenment came, the difficulties of the Seoul's roads were quickly resolved. Since then, I was able to go in Seoul wherever I wanted to without getting lost. Dear saints, why am I telling you about my experience like this? No man's tell us the main doctrine of the Bible as guides or master keys to understanding what the Bible says. Therefore, if you correctly learn Romans and receive the grace of the Lord, you will know the reason and the logic of the gospel and the main doctrines and the structure of the Bible. Of course, other books in the Bible also tell us the way, but Romans does so more comprehensively and systematically than any other book of the Bible. Therefore, I hope that all of you may learn the doctrine of the gospel by studying the Romans and have the full riches of the complete understanding for the gospel. Then you will have a good view of the entire Bible. When studying Romans, we must always seek the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Our studying the Bible cannot be accomplished with the power of our reason alone. The anointing of the Holy Spirit must accompany us to testify, hear, and learn God's word, the Bible. How the, the apostle Paul and the other apostles come to know the reason of the Bible. The apostle Paul was the one of the adversaries of the gospel before believing in Christ. But the Lord revealed himself by calling out of that path of evil destruction. So he says, Galatians chapter 1 verse 11 forward, For I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my one age among my people. So extremely jealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had sent me up to before I was born and who called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone. The Apostle Peter also made a confession of faith in Jesus during his powering life. But Peter fell severely before the death of Jesus. So did his other disciple. But when did the apostles return to their praise and become the witnesses of the Lord, messenger of the gospel, who were not afraid of anything? Was it not after the Holy Spirit of the Pentecost came upon them, as Jesus our Lord said, 
the Holy Spirit came upon them at the Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 verse 4 And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Both Jews and proselytes, Credence and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. The great work of God is the God's work for the salvation of His beloved people through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Only the Holy Spirit works for anyone to stand firm in the word of gospel. I hope and believe that the Holy Spirit who inspired the Apostle Paul to write Romans anoints all of us studying Romans so that we may understand the words of Romans. Indeed, the Romans, along with all other books in the Bible, is the word of the power of the Almighty God. Even now, through Romans, God saves the sinners under the terrible wrath of God who sin, the eternal punishment of hell. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was over the face of deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. It was the first creation of God. What about the new creation of God who saves men in Christ? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit shed this wonderful spiritual light on all of us studying Romans. As I emphasized, it is the pointless to study Romans to increase your knowledge and information. It is never a blessing to approach the problem determining our eternal life or ruin in such way. I praise the Holy Spirit who teaches us in Romans about the divine logic of God who sent His Son, our Jesus, to save us, deserving eternal destruction by sin. Indeed, as I said in the last video, it is not appropriate to listen to the Bible discourse without such urgency and in that case, the Holy Spirit will not work. Indeed, I hope the Holy Spirit will work so that while preaching the Romans, we may taste the power of the gospel more anew and more. Along with this, I hope that those who are still outside Christ may meet the work of God saving them and duly creating them. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now let's take a look at some literary information about Romans. The epistle to the Romans was the letter that the epistle Paul sent to the church in Rome on his third evangelistic trip. It is not difficult for us to guess that Paul, the apostle of the Gentile, would honestly long to preach the gospel in Rome, the center of the world at that time to where all roads led to. Romans chapter 1, 9, fold, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I mention you, always in my prayers, 
asking that somehow by God's will I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to, to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. I do not want you to be unwell, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you, as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. He wanted to go to Rome and preach the gospel if he could. But when the road to Rome was not opened, he wrote this epistle to the Romans. Oh, what a great the providence of God was for this epistle to the Romans. If the Apostle Paul has gone there before writing this letter, this would not have been written. We who are likely to be discouraged with when our things don't go the way we want should learn to see our things in the light of the glory of the God's sovereignty and the providence. In Romans chapter 16 verse 1 to we recognize the one who delivered the Romans to the church in Rome. I commend to you our sister Pepe, a servant of the church at Kangri, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worship of the saints and help her in whatever she may need from you, for she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. About his writing date, there is a slightly different among New Testament scholars, but it is the general trend that it would be about A.D. 57 or 58. So, about 25 years after the Lord's ascension, this epistle to the Romans was born. What relationship had this church had with the Apostle Paul before? There is no believable evidence that there was no direct relationship between both. Norman Catholic Church says that the church in Roman, the receiver of this epistle, had been founded by Peter. However, such a claim is a compelling with no basis at all. There is no historical evidence that any apostle had done it. However, there is only an assumption among New Testament scholars. It may be that some Romans who had been in Jerusalem on the Pentecost day heard the gospel through the apostles and returned to Rome establishing the church. Rather, such an assumption is convincing. However, it is good to see that there was no direct or indirect connection between the Apostle Paul and the church in Rome. But Paul knew that there were some people who believed in the gospel in Rome to serve the church. It is so certain that his heart has indeed been lifted by that fact. The Apostle Paul sought to contact with the church as a person who gave up his life for the glory of the gospel. So, while praying, he must have pleaded with the Lord to make it the outpost of the Gentile missions. Against that background, this epistle to the Romans had been born. We should thank and praise the God for giving us this epistle to the Romans through such providence. That's it for today. In the following videos, we will study the identity of the gospel. In the following video, 
We will study the identity of the gospel according to the text of Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. May our Lord protect us all until we meet together in the next video. Thank you very much.